Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk to you about organizations. Now, most of the time, you're going to be able to do exactly what you need to do just by using your personal account. But if you're ever working on a project and it starts to get really big, or you just have a bunch of people working on the same project, they can get kind of messy. So for those, it's better to have an organization because with organization, it allows you to split up the tasks really easy. I'm not even going to say tax, tasks anymore. I'm just going to say it allows you <laughs> it allows you to split up the work really easily and it also allows you to manage each user's permissions um, really simply. So how do we create these fantastic organizations? Well, what you do is you go up to this button from your profile. I'm pretty sure it's on like every page. And instead of clicking new repository, click new organization. So for now, just think of an organization like a company or something. So you click new organization, and then you go ahead and give your organization a name, email, and there you go. So if you ever wanna make private repositories, maybe you're working on like this secret program and you don't want the world to know, then you're gonna to have to pay a little bit, but if you're ever just wanna have an open source project and make it easier to manage then those are free and then you hit create organization now i'm not going to do this because i already have one and i'll just show you guys what it looks like so again this is for all my open source projects and i have an organization for um some other projects that we're working on so just like a personal account and pull that up again you can have a profile picture so on my personal one it's my face and for my company's organization, it's my logo. And on this one, my name is Bucky Roberts and my organization name is the New Boston Developers. So it's pretty much the same as a personal account. You just, you know, have a different name. So just like before, you can create new repositories, new projects, and we have a couple additional tabs here. So I'll talk you guys through those right now. So I said that an organization is basically like a company. So whenever you first create it, you are going to be the only person in it. However, the reason that you made this is because it's easier to manage with a bunch of people. So whenever you want to add a new person to your organization, you actually have to invite them. So if you click the people's tab, what you can do from here is you can hit invite member. So uh, let's say that we wanted to uh, I don't know, add one of these people. So we wanted to add, I don't know, this guy to my organization. But what we do is we would type in his name and then we would hit invite. I'm not gonna do it because I don't know who that is. And it would pretty much send him an email saying, hey, the new Boston invited you to join the organization. And he could be like, accept or deny. Now, if he accepted, then he would become a member. And all of these, these are my friends and developers, they are already part of my organization. So as you can see, also, whenever you have a bunch of people in your organization, they can have different roles. So the roles can be changed using this little drop down menu right here. And it's really easy to understand. You only have two of them, the owner and a generic member. So the owner is basically the overall admin. They can do anything they want, full access, and that includes um, inviting new people, you can create new projects, you can delete projects, you can basically do anything that you know you can dream of. So we only have two owners in this, and that is me, of course, and my lead developer, since you know he's one of the main people that works on my website all the time. And Busy and Wheatley, they are generic members, and a generic member, they don't have a lot of privileges by default. And that's because they're working on other projects right now. And uh, they can pretty much just see what's going on and pretty much just read or clone the repo. So again, owners can do anything they want and members, they have a uh, little less privileges. So there you go. And you can actually change um, the default settings for normal members. If you go to settings, member privileges, but I like to keep them the same. Now, another thing that we need to cover is this, this teams tab right here. So GitHub is actually really cool, and this is actually really smart how they did it. Instead of going through every single member in your team and adjusting their privileges of what repository they're allowed to access, 
what permissions they have. That would be a pain in the butt. What they allow you to do instead is group people into teams. So you basically make these thing called teams and you stick whoever you want inside it and then you assign permissions to the entire team and it's so much easier this way. So I only have three teams. I keep things really simple. These are the owners. The people in the read access team can only read or look at the repo, nothing else. And the people who have write access, they can edit the repo. So I don't want to give them all the full permissions because I don't want to allow them to just, you know, be able to delete the repository or create new ones. So anytime we have to hire someone new that just has to make a few changes, I add them to the right access team. Now, these team names I made myself, but you can name them anything you want. You can name it Team Bacon if you want. So in order to create a new team, just go ahead and click New Team. And let's just go ahead and name it, I don't know, Team Bacon. Why not? And I'll say that uh, this team is uh, for SEO and marketing. All right, now we have team visibility. This is actually a new thing. Um, do you want it to be able to be seen by everyone or secret? I really don't know why they did it secret. I guess people were complaining that other like teammates from other teams could see them. Are these like thing? Are these things gangs? Maybe that's what they should call them. <laughs> gangs where people don't want to you know be associated with another team. All right, but anyways. Once you hit create team, it's going to create the team using this name. Now, I'm not going to do that because I already have my teams right there. But basically, once you create a team, you can go ahead and click the name. And that brings you into that team homepage. So again, teams are really, really, really easy to understand. They just consist of members. So who do you want as part of that team? And the repositories are what repositories or projects are is this team allowed to access so now we can see that both busy and wheatley are both allowed to access the main new boston repository the main website and now once they're allowed to access it you need to say okay how are they allowed to access it with admin privileges with just write permissions or read permissions so there you go now if i ever just want to make a team and they're not allowed to access any repositories i don't know why i would do that but you can just remove them right there. And if we ever create a new project and I wanna add them to that as well, then I'll just add it right there by searching for it and it'll pop up. But now we got the overview of it. Again, organizations, really, really easy to understand. They're basically like a company and your company has a bunch of employees and all of your employees have different permissions, um, like the managers, I guess you could kind of think of it like a metaphor they have more permission than you know uh just the new guys so there you go organizations simple boom roasted